Welcome to this video on stress transformations. It is one of several videos in a short course on stress posted at Tiriaz Toolbox, a website that contains notes, examples, and algorithms for structural analysis. Please visit the website for more videos and material relevant for this course. The objective in this video is to calculate stress values when the coordinate system rotates. Keep in mind that the concept of stress is defined for infinitesimal material particles. Those are not the real material particles of the actual structural member. Rather, the gray shaded material particles you see in this slide represent a mathematical model. For that reason, it is not the actual material particle that is rotating in this slide. Instead, it is the coordinate system in which we express the stress that is rotating. On the left side, you see the coordinate stresses that form the starting point for the considerations in this video. Notice the infinitesimally small size of this element. Also notice the axial stress sigma xx, the axial stress sigma yy, and the shear stress tau xy and tau yx. Let us assume as a starting point that tau xy equals tau yx, which can be proven by angular equilibrium, and also that the value of all these coordinate stresses are known. Next, consider the equilibrium of an inclined surface cut through the material. By setting up the equations for equilibrium in the horizontal and vertical directions, as is done in the detailed notes available at Tiriaz toolbox, these two equations are obtained. They express the stress perpendicular to the inclined surface, denoted sigma, and the stress parallel to that surface, denoted tau. Notice that theta is the orientation of the inclined surface. These two equations express the axial stress and shear stress when the coordinate system is rotated by an angle theta. While these equations can be directly employed for two-dimensional stress states, we will now follow Christian Otto Mohr and develop a graphical approach that is known as Mohr's circle. On this slide, the two equations on the previous slide are combined, leading to this result. If we compare this results with the generic expression for a circle, shown below, we see that the stress transformation equations from the previous slide expresses a circle. The circle is formed in a plane laid out by the axes sigma and tau. The radius and shift of the center of the circle are identified in red. Every point on the circle is a stress state, meaning that every point on the circle is one realization of sigma and tau for a particular orientation of the inclined surface from the previous slide. This representation of rotated stress states is ingenious but caution must be applied in its practical use because of the variety of sign conventions that can be adopted. The concept of a pole may or may not be used, and special attention is needed for the sign of the shear stress. The next slide adopts a specific set of choices, amongst many available, and those choices are reflected in the following procedure to draw and use Moore's circle. First, for the problem at hand, take note of the coordinate stresses, sigma xx, sigma yy, and tau xy at a specific point in the solid. Let axial stress be positive in tension and negative in compression. The coordinate shear stress, tau xy, is positive if it is in the y direction when acting on the surface whose normal vector is in the x direction. Because tau yx is equal to tau xy, the coordinate shear stress tau yx is positive if it is in the x direction when acting on the surface whose normal vector is in the y direction. Next, calculate the radius and center shift of the circle. The expressions were given on the previous slide. Draw more circle with the calculated radius and center shift, shown as a blue line. On the circle, identify the points representing the coordinate stress state, namely the point sigma xx and tau xy and also the point sigma yy and tau xy. Note the following shear stress conventions. The point sigma xx and tau xy should be plotted below zero if tau xy is positive. To remember this, think of tau xy being negative for clockwise shear in a beam laid along the x-axis. This point is red in the figure. The point sigma yy and tau xy should be plotted above zero if tau xy is positive. This point is blue in the figure. From the point sigma xx and tau xy, which is on the circle, draw a horizontal line until it intersects with the circle again. That point is the pole point. Alternatively, 
Draw a vertical line from sigma yy and tau xy if you want to study sigma yy instead of sigma xx. From the pole point, draw lines in any direction. The point at which the line intersects the circle is a stress state with the following meaning. The orientation of the line is the orientation of the square on which stresses act. Pay attention only to the stress on the near and far edges of the square at the end of each line, as shown in the figure. If the intersection point is on the positive part of the sigma axis then the axial stress on the near and far edges is tension. If the point on the circle is on the positive part of the tau axis then the shear stress on the near and far edges twists the square clockwise. That means positive shear stress, as you see in the insert on the right hand side of this slide. Notice that drawing Moore's circle immediately reveals the maximum and minimum axial stress. They appear at orientations with zero shear stress and are called principal stresses. Also notice that the stress states with maximum shear stress are usually not associated with zero axial stress. Examples of the use of this circle are included in a video posted near this one at Tiryaz Toolbox. Thanks for watching this video. Please visit Tiryaz Toolbox for more videos and material relevant for the modern structural engineer. See you soon.